to get to the earthquake activity, you need to take your get online and get on a web browser and go to Nemo, N E M O dot sciencecourseware dot o r g slash e e c slash capital earthquake. Your teacher might write a shortcut for this on the board. On this page, we are going to be doing the travel time activity. In order to do this activity, you need to bring your mouse over on top of travel time and click on it. Depending on how your computer is set, it might ask you if you need to allow pop-ups before it happens. My computer is already set to allow pop-ups, so all I have to do is click. And there is my pop-up of the earthquake travel time graph. I have two options. One is start, the other one is back. Of course we're going to pick start. Before we continue with using the computer screen, we need to take a quick moment and fill out our lab sheet for the online lab. The first question in the lab sheet asks you what the name of the online lab is that we are going to be completing. As you saw on the previous screen, the name of the lab is the Travel Time Graph. Go ahead and write that in right now. You might or might not get this thing that popped up. If you do, click Run. If not, you're lucky. While you wait for the activity to load, take a moment to familiarize yourself with the layout and tools you will be using. In the upper left-hand corner is your main panel window. You will, If you're doing an online journal, you record your data in the lower left panel. The toolbox you use is in the upper right-hand panel, and the instructions, and yes, you need to read them carefully, are located in the lower right. When you have familiarized yourself, you may click Close. Here's your tasks, also known as your procedure. Follow these, this procedure to be able to complete the lab. The first task, and the only one you can click on right now, is the a bomb that allows you to drag the stations on the map and trigger the explosion. If you do the tasks listed here, they will automatically be checked off as you complete them. If you lose your tasks, you can always get back to it by clicking on tasks. So let's move some stations. Here are the stations you need to drag. Seismograph station 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You can move them anywhere. I'm going to move them all just over here. Do not do what I'm doing. It will make for a very bad lab. When you've moved all of them, you get to trigger the explosion. Now this E is marked as explosion. It is also the epicenter. Woo! Check out the earthquake. The ground is shaking. Notice we're back on our tasks list. We have checked off drag the station map and trigger the explosion. What comes next? After that, we are going to measure and record the SP lag times and distances in the data table. We're also going to verify the data table. First thing we click on is the S-P icon up here. S-P is actually an equation. You're going to take the S time and subtract the P time, but this does it much easier for you. So your stations look completely different than mine. If your scale is too small, you can always zoom in all the way up to 1,000%. I'm going to keep changing around until I find something that's pretty good. So what you do is, these always are the P waves. They come first. The S waves arrive second. So we're going to do for station 1. Click at the beginning of your very first P wave and drag all the way to the beginning of your very first S wave. You'll see a number pop up down here. I got 36.9. So my lag time in seconds is going to be 36.9, which I can type in beneath. You will then go right up here to the stations, choose a different station, station 2, station 3, station 4, station 5, play around with the scale, and input 
the SP lag time. When you think you've got it correct, you will click on Verify Data Table, but we're not there yet. So what I'd like you to do right now is pause, fill in, finish filling all of this in, and then come back to the video. Great, you're back on the video. You've got all of your SP lag times filled in from all of the different stations. Remember, our next task is not to verify the data table because we don't have enough information yet. We're going to need to go back to our tasks window. Back at our tasks window, we see that after clicking on the S-P line, we now need to click on the distance. So here we go, here's the distance. We need to drag this circle, and if you click on the outer edge of the circle and pull back and forth, you can see that you can drag that circle, and you're going to drag it out until it touches each of your um, stations. Notice I've dragged the circle so that it touches station 1. 359 kilometers is my distance. So I'm going to type that in my data table. Please pause this movie while you go ahead and complete your own data table based on the dragging of your circle. And by the way, this is why I said it was a bad idea to copy me. So if you did end up copying me, you're going to have to go back to step one, move your stations, and start over again. Pause the movie now. Great! You're back! Hold on a second while I put in my very last data. Oh dear! Notice, now we've got something that popped up. It says click the button to verify your answers. How confident are you that your answers are correct? I'm very confident. I'm going to verify my data table. Oh no! One or more of my entries is incorrect. These have been marked with stars. I'm going to have to now go back to my SP timeline and try and fix my station 2, station 3, station 4, and station 5 numbers. Oh dear, why don't you pause and fix your numbers while I fix mine? You're back? Let's try verifying our data table again. Oh no! Still got wrong answers. Pause, go back to the S-P and the distance and see if you can get it all fixed. Good, you're back and this time when you clicked on Verify Data Table you got something that looked like this screen up here. All of your entries in the data table are correct. However, you still need to do these three things on your tasks list. Hit OK, and you'll notice we're back at our tasks list. Next, we have to plot the points. So you're going to click on something that says Point Plotter. Let's click. Here we are at Point Plotter. Over here on the right-hand side of our main screen, we actually have little red points. We can drag and drop those points at their correct place. Notice your x-axis is going to be distance, those distances that you found using the distance tool, and your y-axis is going to be sp lag time, which you found using the sp lag tool. Let's drag and drop our very first point. Notice as you move your point over the graph, its coordinates pop up. I'm going to 359, which is right about here. My mousing skills are not as good as I'm sure yours are, and I need to go up to ah, and I need to go up to 36.9 seconds. This is going to be a very very challenging activity, but as you get close to the right point, it should snap into place. Now, if you would you can put your five points on. Press pause on the movie and come back to me when they're set.